Okay, next job for the morning is a botched repair rescue. This is an iPhone 5S that came in. They had tried to replace the screen and wound up in a situation where they had no image on the screen. This is, came to me in a box and I transferred it into one of our boxes, which are these handy dandy crayon school boxes for 57 cents at Walmart. We love them. Um, well, they also said something about the home button not working, so uh, I'm not sure what I'm getting into there. Um, I definitely see some issues. I got my little crap-ass mic USB microscope camera here hooked up. This belongs with the previous job. Let's move it over. By the end of the day today, this workbench in this area is going to be completely trashed. It is Friday, and we refer to Fridays as mob day around here. This is going to be nuts. All right, so I got the home button out of the way. I'm going to think about that last. Um, this looks like their old old screen. I um, wonder if you can see any of this. I'm sorry. Let's get this out here. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to be their old screen. Let's get some magnet going on here. Love these little these little magnet sheets. They work awesome for keeping parts in one spot. Plus, I could, don't have to reassemble to keep track of screws. I can just put the little card away, little magnet card away with all their crap on it. So, I um, wonder if this camera will show you what I'm, what I'm looking at here. I bet it will. Can you see the digitizer connector? I will never be able to point at that with these tweezers. Looking at a screen right here. What a mess. Uh, so I see a smash digitizer connector. Uncover my keyboard here. All these work orders and junk laying around. Let's see. I made Alt-U my USB microscope, which for some reason will not work with any other camera turned on. It's bullshit. So real soon, guys, I'm going to order that camera for this big microscope. But yeah, check out digitizer. That is going to need replaced. I'm going to look at it through the good microscope and make sure it's not shorted anywhere stupid. But save that for middle priority. This phone does not get an image on the screen. I'm not changing digitizer connector until we have an image on the screen. So let's see what's going on with this thing. Um, all I have here, they brought their old screen here. And then they brought a new screen. Now, given that they smashed up the connector, let's look at the connector on the new screen pretty good. I think that looks good. So let's figure out if there no image, is no backlight or no image. Is it no backlight or no image on their screen, my screen, uh, you know, what's up? So um, I'm going to grab a test screen. We're going to use that first. Oh, uh, five. Here we go. iPhone 5S. Lines in no touch is what this one's labeled. Perfect. We don't have no fucking touch anyway. Look at the digitizer connector. We're not even going to plug that in. But let's make sure it's not shorted. Seriously. All right. Let's make sure it's not shorted in more than 10 places. I'm just going to nudge these around a little bit. <laughs> actually falling back into place pretty nicely but we're not gonna send that shit out of here man oh man this is really fucked up it don't have to be very fucked up to uh, make someone say replace the connector all it takes is a little bend and that connectors done all right, nobody's short now here, although most shorts on the digitizer connector are okay. I don't know any that aren't okay. But I'm sure there's power in that sucker somewhere if I looked at the schematics. So let's plug our screen on. And let's get our battery access open and unhooked, which should have been step one. Dumb mistake. There's a lot of dumb mistakes you can live with. That was one of them. Considering it was all sitting there shorted out anyway. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect battery. Check battery voltage.
three and three quarters. We will take it. So many distractions. All right, we're doing LCD only. Hmm. Is it possible? that either their screen is bad or the short that I just corrected on that digitizer connector is causing this phone to get an image again. I'd love to know all I had to do is throw a connector on this phone. Boot. We have lock screen. So. Disconnect battery. Disconnect my screen that is definitely bad. Let's hook up their screen. Let's see what this image looks like. Right. Nobody touching there. Apple logo. I love seeing an Apple logo, especially after I replace a big ass chip on the bottom of the CPU. I think they just have a fucked up digitizer connector. Weird. They came in saying there was no image. Blank screen. Cool. Where is the bubble wrap? Alright, uh, shop opens in 15 minutes. And so begins mob day. Friday is going to be crazy. It is a little dim, but it's dim like, um, not backlight dim. It's dim like no ambient light sensor dim. Backlight's definitely on. I can see it through the back. So I know we're not going to have any touch. Why am I waiting for slide to power off? Oh, because it's Friday and I'm done. I'm so done. I'm ready to go home. All right. Let's look at the digitizer connector on their screen real close because it did smash the connector in the phone. You know what? They must have smashed that connector in the phone using a different fucking connector because this thing looks beautiful. It had to have. So we will most likely be using their screen. We'll see. Looks promising so far. I've got to get around to labeling all this stuff. You know what? I think those connectors are going to be in a different bin. I see LCDs. Digitizer. And top side repair. You know what? It's not going to be that difficult. These, a lot of times, I will do in the phone and not take it out of the phone, but. Um, I don't, I really don't like working around the batteries with all that heat. And I really like to send the boards back out of here spotless. And if the board's in the phone, I can't ultrasonic clean the part of the board that I'm working on. So we're going to yank the logic board to do this repair. About 10 extra minutes to do a much better job. That is very, very worth it, in my opinion. I wish everybody else would think the same way. But then again, if they did, I wouldn't be doing near as many botched repair rescues. We advertise this botched repair rescue thing. And it keeps me busy. Gosh. I'm never going to get any subscribers if I can't keep this shit in the middle of the camera, right? All right, that's all of my cool standoff screws. Let's move on to the Phillips. Sim trays out. Mm. 
No, it's not all the standoff screws. Seems like I always forget one. I need to order one of those screwdrivers that takes those things out. I always use pointy tweezers and a flathead to take these out. That one was top right. Although I think they're all the same size, I can still keep track of where they're at. And there's going to be a screw in the top right in the middle, hidden by this little sticker. Gosh, Apple almost tricked me with the sticker. I could have forgot that screw and tore the top of the circuit board off. All right, flip it over, and pull the Wi-Fi antenna cable off without breaking it. Remove this little sticker because it's in my fucking way. Ah. Ten minutes before opening. There are going to be a lot of interruptions in this video because I plan on videoing this entire repair. I'm going to clip out the interruptions where the phone rings and customers come in. This girl is going to be so happy to get this phone back. Using my FM 2032 micro pencil with the 0 0.1 millimeter conical tip with a very, 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 very slight wedge so, uh, filed onto the end of it. I actually put the wedge onto the end of it using this microscope. So let's have a look at this board. Am I at 800? What are we at? 750? Eh. Oh, cool. These are the ones without the end caps. Let move these junk ass pins out of the way. Just to be clear about what I'm working on here, I do have this little microscope here hooked up I can show you with. Hear that stand squeak? That's the junk stand that come, comes with this AM, AM scope microscope. So here's our before connector. Not salvageable. Piece of shit. Don't fall apart over here. I'm trying to do a video. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is add a shitload of flux to this. I'm using some different flux today. SMD 4300 TF10. Chip quick. SMD 4300 TF10. Tacky flux may not be the best thing in the world, but I like the water soluble. I've also been using... I've been using this stuff quite a bit by MG Chemicals. It uh, it turns, you know, the, the yellowy color on that, and that kind of bothers me when I'm working on something and I wind up cleaning it really often. So, um, let's see, I think we want to be back here. Yeah, I'm getting a little better at this stuff. Bear with me, guys. I'll wind up making some kick ass videos before long. I'm going to break down and spend the money on this microscope really soon because I'm just, I'm. Um, Feeling a sense of urgency to show everybody what's going on. I've been watching a lot of other places do micro soldering online. Watching a lot of people learn it online too, as it seems. See some shit that makes me cringe. Definitely makes me feel better about what I'm doing here. All right, I when doing this, where is my tube of it? Um, this is the solder I'm going to be using today. It is a solder paste by MG Chemicals. It's a standard 6337, 6337 lead-based solder. And I've only got two hands, so what I do is I take a tiny little drop of this stuff and I squirt it out on this piece of Captain tape that's got drops of this stuff all over it. I try to always use fresh shit because I'm always using this to clean old solder off the board. Um, so anyway, I use that to dip my tip in. And if I turn my microscope light down, can you see it any better? You know what? You can see it a little better. Let's see if I can work with that. Oh my God. Sorry, it's more important that I see this than you do. Good enough. 
All right, so I'm going to take my leaded solder. I have just added flux all to this connector. Way too much, which I like. I'm not answering that call. All right, back to this view. It always disconnects that USB microscope when I switch cameras. That's what. All right, let's see a 750. You'll do it. This little micro pencil, it's it's pretty tough, but you know, it just for some things, it just barely has enough ass. We're going to go up. That alarm you hear is my five minute alarm. It means our shop opens in five minutes. What? Plug a key in to adjust temperature. It's annoying shit. All right, about 50 degrees. 800 on that micro pencil. I feel like that might have smoked one of these the other day. I had the same exact tip sort of beeping error at me and it was toast. The only thing I can figure is that I was running it at 800. I, I don't know, maybe I just got a bad one. I don't see anybody else bitching about it. It's a little better. Uh, the board's heating up a little bit. I'm probably... I, I'd like to start doing this with uh, preheating because you notice after the board heats up a little bit, this all gets a lot easier. Not such a big temperature change with the board already hot. So now all I'm doing right here is I'm flowing the solder that I'm going to use to install the new connector right in with the old stuff here because I need to lower, I don't need to, but I really want to lower the melting point of what's on the board. A lot of important stuff here. And, um, I like to use as little heat as possible. In some cases, I'll use bismuth. It has a ridiculous, like, crazy low melting point. It'll, this shit will melt. Just hold it in your hands and it'll, like, start getting soft. Alright. Is that little dude underfilled? No, you'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to be running my heat away from the processor. Oh, yeah, look how shitty this looks. This is what I just did. There's our connector with my crap all blobbed all over it. There's my USB disconnect. All right. I don't think I'll be able to wick with that micro pencil on this one. All right, I'm going to shoot for about 380C on hot air. Actually, 375. I need to get one of these that has a knob because it's like it takes me forever to get to 375. There it is. Sounds about right. Let's go ahead and attach this board to my uh, my stand here. There we go. Just there on the stand where it belongs. I didn't put any tension there. Just enough to keep that board from sliding. Uh, you don't want to put any pressure anywhere when you're heating these things up. One of the biggest mistakes I've ever made when I first started doing micro BGA rework was to put... Oh shit, two minutes. Was to put tape around the area that I'm working on. Well, what's that going to do to all the chips around the outside? You know, what will happen is... What happened to me was the customer comes back and said, hey, ever since you fixed the touch screen on my phone, nobody can hear me talking. It's like, Ugh. and it wound up being audio I see that I had tape over. So, you know, the heat combined, you know, that, that solder melted too, which caused that chip to shift a little bit and screwed me. I replaced the phone. Painful lesson. I got to go open shop. So I'll probably be clipping some of these out of here. Um, open shop, come back here, and then I'm going to take this connector off clean the pads, put a new one on it, and put this phone together. These people will be like, it's done already? And then my other customers that watch this video are going to be like, what about my laptop? But I'm only one guy. Open shop.
Any minute? I'm just waiting for my door to ding. Surface mount rework is tricky in a shop where you're answering the door and answering the phone too because you don't want to heat all this up and have it all hot and going smooth and then walk off for it to cool down. Anyways, I've been away for, we opened at 10, 20 minutes. We had a small line of people out front. Phone starts ringing. Um, since I started taking mail ins, it's just, oh, oh, wow. I'm really liking it though. What I would really like is to get away from screen replacements altogether. All right, let's go in for the kill. I'm going to heat my hot air here up to 375 on the dial. Um, I don't know how accurate the temperature is, but I know how accurate it is in my head. So, um, 208. Nozzle's probably a little big, but you know, I really like this nozzle. You really get a feel of your hot air and the way it looks and the way it sounds and the way the heat is hitting other things around your actual target and you just you really get a feel of it and that's how you decide where to set your temperatures. It would be a fucking miracle if I get this connector off of here before somebody else walks in. Alright, I'm starting to get a little a little soft here. Let's go. Hey! Trash. This is what that looks like. Now, if you make dang sure everybody's melted before you lift, you'll, you won't tear, tear any pads. Um, we're getting a lot of stuff. Um, we're getting a lot of stuff sent here because people get anxious and they start to pull before it's melted. And I don't really think the sensory in the human body is sensitive enough to feel the tiny little bit it takes to pull the pad off some of these some of this shit so just make sure everything's melted before you start pulling um, I've switched over to my 2027 um, because I don't trust that micro pencil to be able to wick this off properly I don't want to deal with this shit clumping up and being a pain in my ass so I'm gonna use a bigger iron a way bigger iron All right, flux on all those. I'm going to drag a blob of leaded over the top of all this crap. I just like working on these lower end boards. Such a low, lower stress level. It's like almost anything that I could do to this phone is something that I can fix. I got so many parts. Gobs of parts. Alright. Q tip action here. Of course. Alright. Some lab grade. Equate. Brand. Always save. Dollar General Special. Q tips.
Cool. All right, so here's where we're at right now. I can't wait to show you this while I'm actually doing it. And it looks good under the big microscope. It looks like shit with this one. All right, so there is where I'm at right now. All right, fun time. I bet I spend half of every day helping people feel better. Because if you don't, they're going to be mad at you for it. <laughs> and then you're going to be the bad guy. Man, I hate to wick these off because these, these pads really look good. I'm going to do it anyways. Just enough flux to cover the pads. Probably still excessive, but who likes for shit to go wrong in the middle of the job? If you don't have enough flux there, especially wicking, it's it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a mess. Come on, baby. And you know what? This larger iron, we're going back down to 750. I'll solder the connector at 750 as well because they melt really easy. Oh, 750. Uh, the braid I'm using is some really small stuff. I don't remember where I ordered this from. Is it all spec? Really like it. Took me a while to find some really, really small braid. Beautiful. First side's done. Let's do the other side. Lewis, I know you told me not to hold the braid this way, but I'm doing it anyway. Looks beautiful. Because I don't have it on the heat on there long enough to burn my fucking fingers. This weekend's project is going to be um, ventilation. I've built a, a makeshift air filter that actually looks like it's pretty promising. But for now, I opened the window behind me. It's not good. Here's where I'm at on this connector replacement. Pretty much all the solder gone. I missed those couple of end pads. But this actually looks really good. So. There we are. You know what? Just for shits and grins, for giggles and shits, go ahead and wick off those end pads. Uh, let's see if there's enough flux in my wick to do it. Oh, yeah. And just so you know, I'm not bullshitting here. I'll show you once more. That's acceptable for me. Sure, there's a little solder left on the end pad. 
and two pads. But you know what? I'll solder those first. Yes, I see digitizer connector. Seriously. Some of these components, you drop them and they're just they're fucking gone. There it is. Alright. Oh, this is embarrassing. Micro soldering 101, the sticky shit off the end of your tweezers because it makes putting shit like this in place a royal fucking nightmare. Alright, let me show you where I'm at. New connector sitting on the board. And just so you know, I'm not bullshitting. Look at my crappy ass tweezers. I'm going to move that connector just to fuzz. See? So even though I'm not rich enough to put a camera on my big microscope, I'm determined to show you this shit. So we're gonna need micro pencil. I ain't doing this with this big fat ass tip. Micro pencil with my little wedge file on, and I know you're not supposed to file your tips, but I really wanted to. And I've seen Jessica Jones filed hers. And if you see Jessa do it, it means it must be acceptable. Just tweezer repair here. Sometimes I fix my tweezers under the microscope. Gotta order some new tweezers. This is bullshit. Yeah, we're good. Alright, since there's the flux in my solder is gonna be burnt to shit by the time it makes it to this board. I'm going to add flux to the board. Oh man, those tweezers suck. Let's try these. I like these a little better. They came from Allspec, but they're just about fucked too. The first two pins are the worst. You know what? That little tiny bit of solder I left on that end pad, and I'm like, I'll just do it first. It's screwing me. Fair enough. That was in my orientation, that was bottom right. Oh, I've got this little bit of a a jitter that makes this really hard for me. There we go. 
So I've now talked, talked, <laughs> tacked, top left and bottom right. I'm going to go against my better judgment here and nitpick a little fucking bit. It's like I always do. Nitpicking is expensive, guys. Every time you nitpick, something breaks, and then you're like, fuck, I wish I just hadn't touched it. Here's where I'm at right now. This side tacked, and you see I had bridged those pins together. I'm not worried about it right now. Can you see I bridged it? I bet you can if I move this piece of shit over here. Yeah, so there we go. That side's tacked. The other tack is my top left orientation. Where you at, you little bastard? And we're tacked there. So I'm going to move along inside of the rest of these pins. I'm not going to stop every time I do a little bit because I've been doing this for like 15 minutes now. This needs to be done. My little wedge is so hard to see. I figure out which way it's pointed. I need to put a little mark on the handle. Right, so. I'm really sucking at this today. Let's, see, let's hit a couple on the other side so I can stop using tweezers. You know, up until this point, I haven't really did any very serious repairs on camera. And part of that's because of, uh, I don't want to get nervous. And I do get a little nervous when I know I'm being recorded. I just about got enough tech down now. I can take the tweezers out of this picture. Wow, look how much faster I am on that side. I'm going to use two hands on my right hand because I've got a little bit of a jitter today and it's making this hard to not botch it. It's a little worse knowing it's my last connector without digging. So when you got enough flux and the temperature's right and you got a ball of solder on the end of your iron, you really don't have to touch each pin. You just kind of drag that ball across to them. All right, we're looking all right here, but I'm gonna have to use some wick because I got a little bit on the connector, which sucks. But this will be structurally sound. It will survive screen replacements without the connector falling apart. Nice, love this wick. Somebody out there knows that I'm micro soldering and they're keeping all the customers away.
love how this micro pencil can pull out bridges. All right, so I got a little more to wick over here because I did get it on the connector of just a fuzz. All right, motherfucker. Maybe that's a test point I just blob solder on. Another good thing about working on inexpensive boards is that it's not such a big mistake when you do something stupid. I think this is actually the first board level repair I've filmed. And that's because I don't want to do anything stupid. Anytime you do anything stupid in this business, it's expensive. So here's where I'm at. You can see where I touched the connector a little bit, but I've wicked it off nice and flat. This will function. It's definitely not worth redoing the entire connector just because a couple of the pins are the wrong color since they're tinned with leaded solder. It's not going to cause a problem as long as it's totally flat. I'm going to move in nice and close with the big scope. I'm going to turn up my light and make sure this is all nice and flat. Well, aside from my couple of little dings where I got a tiny bit of solder in the connector, it looks marvelous. Clean it up. For the sake of testing. Try the alcohol, and then I'm going to test it. Okay. Oh, what a Friday! I wonder if I get this done this morning, if this customer will be able to get it. I hope so. I'd really like to make this kid's day. There's a girl out there that really wants her phone back. And they wanted to save money. Just put a screen in it. Which is usually okay, but man, you really got to be careful with those connectors. This shit breaks easy. And then it takes micro soldering to repair it. I'm not even going to be anywhere near that camera. I'm never going to get any fucking subscribers. I don't plan on holding back a whole lot on this YouTube channel. This is a place that I'm going to be able to express myself and cuss and get pissed off because I want to be able to show people what it's normal to go through. Uh, speaking of get pissed off and cuss, I've got to go answer the phone again. Alright. I do have a cordless phone, but... It's upfront charging right now because I didn't charge it yesterday. So, all right, we'll tear this little antenna cable back out of the way, or it will short to a necessary power line and give you a no boot situation that will be like, <gasps> what I do. All right, I'm going to use, against my better judgment, their screen again. Nothing stupid done. Mm-hmm. 
don't like the way it feels too much, but it did give me a nice, nice little pop. It's definitely tight. Right, plug battery in. Power button. Apple logo. I wonder what happened to the rest of my 5C digitizer connectors. You know, it's not a real common repair for me anywhere. Most, you know, most everything is six and six plus and stuff. So I'm gonna see if we got touch functionality. If we don't, I'll try a different screen. If we do, yay! I'm really confident in the solder job. So you know, something else that happens. No touch. No, wait, 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 wait. This phone's slow booting. It's one of those. Um, something else that happens is uh, sometimes you'll run into that connector being smashed and you'll put a connector on it and then you still won't get touch. And right on the other side of the connector is where the t where the touch IC is, one of them anyways. I, I don't remember which one, but whatever. I have had smashed connectors before where you put a connector on it and there's still no fucking touch. And you wind up having to replace one or both of the ICs on bottom to get the touch screen working again. So um, this one here, I think I have working touch. Oh yeah. I can't test everything else on this phone without a passcode. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, this is a local job. So if there's any other issues, they can bring it back. There was no other problems with this phone before the screen replacement. I know I didn't get anything too hot doing the connector, so I know this connector is going to be good. So my next step here is going to be ultrasonic cleaning. And I don't know if you can see the screen or not, but I do have a slide to power off. And we're powering off, so successful digitizer connector. Um, I'm going to ultrasonic clean this board. Shit, I never turned the temperature on. That's lovely. Well, my plan was to spin around in 30 seconds in the cleaner and then show you what it looks like, but I'm a dumbass and forgot to turn the temperature on. That thing's going to take forever to heat up. So let's get the battery out of the picture. I love successful repairs. Successful repairs pay the bill. Whenever you're doing no fix, no fee, repairs that aren't successful or have a low chance of being successful, they suck to even start on. I mean, yeah, you can easily spend all day and not make a penny. So what we're charging here is really, really small compared to some of the other places that micro solder. And, uh, you know, as time goes on, we get to be really, really busy. I will wind up having to raise our rates. All right, now, here is the favor part of this job. Let's get something to put all these parts on. The board repair part is just about done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean it, dry it, but this phone came in with you know, in a box with a little baggie of screws. <laughs> I'm going to finish their screen replacement for them and then see what's up with that home button. We're going to need that. Their screen does not have it. And even if it did have it, it's in the wrong spot. Always in the wrong spot. If you order screens that already have these little proximity sensor and camera brackets on there, and let's say it's the whole assembly with the speaker and shit already on it, it's almost always in the wrong spot. You gotta take them apart and fix them or your customer will come back and say things are not working. All right, you know what? This video is already clipped once since the recording stopped. I'm not gonna sit here and record this screen you know, screen replacement, that's, you get on YouTube and type in screen replacement, you'll find lots of people doing it, a lot of good resources out there. Um, this channel is going to be mostly micro soldering and everyday shit that goes on at repair shops. Um, I got some kind of cool ideas that might help boost subscriptions, I, I don't know. 
I'm never going to get any subscribers until I fix my camera shit. But for right now, I'm by God determined to show you what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to do the screen assembly and get this part of it, wherever the hell the camera is at, this part of it ready to go. Um, I'm going to come back whenever the cleaner is heated up. I will ultrasonic the top of this board, uh, rinse it, quick little dry, show you what it looks like. And then it's going to go through about a two hour drying process to make sure there's no liquid left over. I probably wouldn't have to go through all that shit if I didn't ultrasonic, but I like for this stuff to look really good. So when people open the phone and they look at that and go, wow, that's what I'm after. So I'll be back whenever shit's ready. Okay. So I have sat here and carefully selected all the screws for this display assembly, put them all back in place. Everybody looks happy. Um, Clean the dust off the camera, make sure the lens is okay. Clean all the fingerprints and goop off the front of, you know, off the camera lens. It kills me when a, sh a phone comes here from another shop and it's got all this bullshit all over the inside of the glass where the camera is. It's like, dude, don't your customers ever gripe about that? Ours probably wouldn't either, but I'm, I'm you know, I nitpick. Nitpicking costs you a lot of money. Um, I hate it when I'm trying to get that little thing in, in just the right spot and do something dumb, nitpicking over a fraction of a millimeter. So. Um, I'm about two degrees away here on the ultrasonic cleaner of where I would like to be to clean this board. So just a reminder here, I don't know exactly where I left off because I did stop the video and I've been off doing other stuff for a minute, but here's our freshly replaced connector. And you can see where I accidentally got some solder inside the connector and wicked it off flat. That's what you should do. It's not worth replacing the whole connector if you wind up with a little bit of solder on the pins. Let's see if I can hit a different angle here. It always looks like shit from the top. All right, so there's our connector with all the, see this crap? That is why I ultrasonic these boards when I'm done. I don't like sending them out looking like that. You know, these little USB microscopes, they're actually all right. Just for doing basic inspection. I can see one solder joint there looks a little crummy, but most likely this microscope not doing it justice. I'll look at it again with the big one just to make sure that's okay. All right. Oh yeah, that solder joint that looks crappy under that USB microscope. It is actually a blob of burnt flux on top of the solder. So that's where the color that comes out of these things is just, it'll really, it's deceiving. Okay. I should have peeled a little water damage indicator out of the way before I burnt it with hot air. Because it needed to go anyway for ultrasonic cleaning. Otherwise it's just going to come out red. Or some variant of red. Okay. Oh, look, I got solder on, on the A. Huh, we'll leave it. Okay. It's reverse. All right, so go, go, gadget. Ultrasonic. Clean. Get through this Friday so I can go home. Same logic board. You should believe me by now. Well, we're going to hit that spot. Trying to get as little water on this board as possible. 30 seconds is my target. 15 seconds. 10. Thirty seconds. All right. There's thirty-five seconds. So I'll displace as much of that water as I can with compressed air. I did get a little bit of a, a griping about using compressed air on these boards, and I was like, "What the fuck? Are you serious?" So 
if this little bit of a stream of compressed air will blow anything off of this board, it's not on there very good to start with. So if you're finding your work is being messed up by compressed air, you're not doing a very good job because this connector, there's no way in fucking hell that this compressed air is going to damage anything. <laughs> And don't blow all the screws off the table while you're at it. All right, so there's water displacement. Or er, force it out with compressed air. Now I'm going to take an alcohol bath here. And I'm going to submerge it back up to the point where my ultrasonic cleaning was, maybe just a fuzz farther. I'm rotating it, spinning it around. Because this top end of the board, it's got uh, touch ICs and it's got some other stuff that we really don't want to get wet. Um... Figures. STS, this is Jason. May I help you? All right. So I got interrupted. I'm going to redo the alcohol part of this because it sat and dried. And I don't know. I like to blow the alcohol off the board. Don't know why. Yeah, I do. Because this is 91, not 99. And there will be a tiny bit of water in it, which is distilled water. There's still no contaminants. So you are okay to use 91. Don't let anybody fool you. Just don't leave it on the board. Okay. This day is going to be so full of interruptions. This video is going to become very, very difficult. So let me show you where I'm at now. This will be where I stop the video. Here's our connector after ultrasonic. You'll see I got a little solder there in the A and that little residue there, that's where the water damage tag was, right over the 20 in the A, T, and S. So, a little closer if I can. This is our new connector, no longer smashed. I can't wait to get a camera on the big microscope. And you can see there that this connector has clearly been replaced because you can see the pins where I've accidentally tinned them with a little bit of solder. So, looks pretty good. There is a connector replacement. I'm going to show you the other side of it. So, iPhone 5S digitizer connector. Turned out really nice. Now, there's one pad in this micro on this view here that looks one pin that looks a little meh, but I can promise you, put it under the big microscope here and it looks beautiful. So I'm not going to nitpick. You know what will happen if I nitpick? I bumped the stop button. You know what will happen if I nitpick? I'll go to fix that tiny little bit of stuff that looks bad and I'll melt this fucking connector and I'll wind up having to redo the whole job. So this is electrically sound. It works great. Um, there's no issues here. It's strong. It'll survive screen replacements without the connector popping off. Um, so it, it really is a beautiful job. This is a robust repair. This person will get hopefully get their phone back today if they make it in here to get it. Um, I'm only charging for the connector replacement on this board. I'm not charging for fixing the screen and I'm probably going to throw in the home button. So that's it. iPhone 5S connector replacement. Um, pretty shitty video. I promise I will be doing better once I get a camera on this thing. I might actually cross that bridge within the next seven days. So um, it's like I said, it's, it's really hard to justify spending 100 or 200 or 300 dollars on a camera for my big microscope. But the more I the more I do this, the more I want to show off what's going on under this thing. So if not for the sake of business, just for the sake of my own enjoyment, because I really like demonstrating what I'm doing here, I'm proud of it. These connectors turn out awesome. This person has a working phone when most any other shop would have said, sorry, you need a new logic board. Well, not most any other shop. A lot of them are coming to terms and they're realizing that they can have them send it off or tell the customer you can take it here. But anyways, my phone's ringing again. Um, I got to go. I got to get busy. I'll be uploading this video as soon as I cut out the stupid shit. Well, the boring shit. I'm going to leave the stupid shit in here. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.